The second module that I use all the time is the D-click module. Now, this module is pretty self-explanatory, but by dialing in a couple of the nuanced settings, you can get it really tailored to what your content needs. There are a lot of things that can cause clicks and pops in audio for sometimes no reason at all. You get digital artifacting that can cause little ticks and clicks. If you're, say, transferring a vinyl record and digitizing it, then obviously you're gonna get a lot of needle movement. And I cannot tell you how many times I've heard everything from YouTube videos all the way up to like major records have all these little mouth noises on them where you can hear over all the nice beautiful vocals or information that you're getting all this like I really, really don't like that. And so that's where D-Click comes in. This module only has four parameters to operate. So let's start with algorithm. Choosing the right algorithm to handle the different types of clicks that happen in your audio can really help you dial in and only affect the ones that you want. The single band algorithm works well as sort of a general purpose setting, but it excels with digital artifacts and little audio glitches that are just very fast clicks that go by really quickly, and they don't have mouth noises attached to them, it's more again of digital anomaly. M-band or multi-band periodic is more tailored to sort of rhythmic clicking that you might find on a scratched record or something where there's a little bit of a rhythm, it's a little bit of a consistent frequency, and the frequencies that it occupies are roughly the same. M-band random works really well on clicks and also sort of bumps or thumps that are changing in frequency content as they happen, and it's suited well for preserving longer running frequencies like voices or instruments and only tailoring to just those individual clicks beforehand. And low latency works really, really well on mouth noises and again, very short clicks. If the other three algorithms don't work for you, low latency is worth a shot. Next, you want to adjust the frequency skew. Now this basically tells the module what range of the frequency spectrum all the clicks and pops you want it to address are happening in. A lot of the things that I run into, especially with narration, voiceover, there are a lot of mouth noises and those tend to happen in the higher registers of the frequency spectrum. So you can address those better by shifting and skewing those frequencies up to the higher range. Pretty much every other click or pop or thump that you might use this module to address is gonna happen in the lower end of the frequency spectrum and you can skew it in that direction but I find I get pretty good results just by leaving this slider alone. Adjusting the click widening slider will expand the range of repair around whenever a click occurs. So if you have longer mouth noises than just little ticks and pops, you've got a lip smack that's you know a few more milliseconds than you'd like, you can address that by just shifting that slider a little bit longer and it'll repair a little bit more of the range around those sounds. This is definitely a salt to taste kind of slider and you can go too far with it and sort of over smooth your audio if you widen the area too much. So I always err on the side of caution and keep it around one to two milliseconds maximum. And finally, the sensitivity slider will adjust how aggressively you wanna reduce these clicks and pops. So of course, the higher you go, the more significantly you're gonna have smoothing. The lower you go, the less it'll do and the more it'll just kinda of let clicks and pops go by. If you go too far with this, it'll start detecting things that really aren't clicks, especially on raspy voices. I've worked with a lot of narrators and a lot of voiceover artists who have really good grit to their voice. Going too far with the D-click module actually tries to smooth that grit out and it sounds really filtered and phasey and strange. So I always recommend erring on the side of caution with the sensitivity slider as well. Again, I would highly recommend using this module to get rid of mouth clicks. They're one of my personal pet peeves in sound. Using the M-band random and setting the sensitivity to somewhere in the neighborhood of 3.5 to 4 seems to work the best. And don't forget to adjust the skew a little bit towards the high frequency range so that you leave some of the other stuff alone and you're really just addressing your mouth clicks. The differences that this module will make in your audio are subtle, but they're really important and it's going to leave your audio sounding much, much cleaner and a lot more professional than if you didn't use this module at all.